I was talking to a new client recently and we were talking about areas that you absolutely need to see, places that you just can't miss while visiting Lower Alabama. Yes, we're going to go over the areas you must visit, places that our clients are asking to see and exactly how to get there. Who knows? By the end, you might just feel like a local. So get ready for the grand unveiling of the trendiest hotspots in town with some jaw-dropping locations that may make you question your life choices. Hey everyone, let's dig into the interesting stuff in this video. Get ready to see the big picture and understand how everything connects. Jess is out sick, so sorry, you're stuck with me instead. If she was here, she'd tell you that the layout from Gulf Shores to Fairhope isn't perfect, the roads from Daphne to Foley are as crooked as a politician's promise, for sure. We never expected to need an interstate to handle all the people heading to the beaches. Baldwin County wasn't meant to be a big city area, and we like it that way. So driving the back roads is just part of life here. To give you a better idea, I'll show you Baldwin County on a map to give you some context. Gulf Shores and going north in Baldwin County, you'll find Orange Beach, then Foley, and Alberta which is a little small part of town just east of Foley. Then further north, you'll come across some of our smaller cities like Somerdale, Robertsdale, and Loxley. These are the areas that are a little more country. So if you're looking for a place with some land, this might be the area to be. But since the Gulf of Mexico is just south of you and Mobile Bay is just west, you are going to get a mix of coastal living and some wide open spaces for those who prefer a more peaceful environment. But with that being said, all of our areas offer peace and tranquility. Even the more populated areas like Spanish Fort, Daphne, and Fairhope, I don't care that it's the Eastern Shore. They're all popular areas. They still offer a lot of serenity too. And I guess what I mean by that is no matter where you're at, you'll find a beautiful sunset overlooking farmland or a forest, a body of water of some sort, literally something you'd see out of a movie. And no, you won't see a, you know, a bunch of high-rise buildings or shopping centers like you do on the Magnificent Mile, but that is the beauty of it all. Now that I've mentioned all these beautiful areas, let's take a look and talk about them a little bit. I want to talk about some primary roads because it's important to familiarize yourself with the area before visiting. So let's take a look. We're going to start near Bay Manette. Here you'll find I-65 running northeast towards Montgomery and southwest towards Mobile. Bay Manette doesn't get a lot of attention, but it does offer a hospital right off the interstate along with the courthouse and the county jail. But what's really impressive is Novellus's aluminum manufacturing plant that's rivaling the most expensive projects in all of Alabama history. They told us a few years ago that the aluminum rolling plant was coming to town, but the project cost that they were predicting doubled to $4.1 billion and is still ongoing. So if you're looking for a way to head to lower Alabama, this may be a good starting point. Now, getting back to the roads, this is right off of Route 31 as you head south towards Spanish Fort. And if you watched any of our previous videos, you'll know Spanish Fort is a hot spot for people commuting from Mobile or Pensacola because of its proximity to I-10. Not only is it near the interstate, but it also has great schools, a lively community with awesome restaurants, and plenty of shopping at the Eastern Shore Center. And one of my personal favorites, Eastern Shore Lanes, which is the local bowling alley. And they just announced that they're adding go-karts and putt-putt golf. So there will be plenty of options for everyone. While we're on the subject, let me share some of my favorite restaurants off the causeway too. As you're heading to Mobile, if you haven't tried them, make sure you stop by Felix's, the original Oyster House, or Bluegills. I promise if you try any of those, you will not be disappointed. Which reminds me, after years of waiting, we're excited to announce the upcoming construction of a new bridge spanning the seven mile stretch into the port city. This awesome bridge known as the Bayway was just awarded a $550 million federal grant to replace the current Bayway Bridge. Now, I know you hear me talking about the Causeway and the Bayway, and you're probably thinking, what is this guy talking about? So let me break it down. When locals mention the Bayway and Causeway, this is what we're talking about. The Bayway or the Jubilee Parkway 
is a four-lane bridge that links Mobile and Baldwin counties. Built in 1978, this interstate bridge is a major route for many and often people give it a lot of gripes or complaints in size because of rush hour and summer traffic. And early morning fog can also be a pain in the you-know-what because it creates some pretty hazardous conditions and even a minor fender bender can cause hours of traffic backup. Now, the causeway, officially named the Battleship Parkway, was built in 1926, providing a new connection between our two counties for the first time since the day of just bay boats. It's prone to flooding and can get pretty crowded around lunchtime, so make sure to check your maps, but in general, it's a pretty good alternative route. It's also a great spot for fishing from the back of your car, your truck, so don't be surprised if you see anyone fishing on the side of the road there. There's also plans for a five and a half mile pedestrian and bike trail along the causeway, along with new parks, picnic areas, and boat launches. I'm pretty excited about that one. But to keep on track, let's say you cross the Bayway from Mobile and you get off on the first exit. You're now going to see mile marker 35A and turning right will take you south on Highway 98 in Daphne, which is just south of Spanish Fort. And we have a lot of clients land here for the same reasons as Spanish Fort. It's proximity to the interstate. It's bustling nature, excellent school systems, and most importantly, it's affordability. And when it comes to heavy traffic, Highway 98 included, along with 181, 59, and 182. So let's work our way down. Let's say you made your way down 98 to Farrell Avenue, and now you turn east going towards 59. As soon as you get to 181, this is where you'll find more traffic. But I feel like this is the end of the road. Like going further south on 181, it's going to lighten up a little bit and probably because locals nearby are traveling to our new Aldi and right next door is Walmart. Past that, you'll find a lot of farmland, some subdivisions and, you know, a few businesses. My favorite being Billy's, which is close by. And this is where you go for some really good burgers and pork belly bites. And I apologize, everyone, once I start talking or thinking about food, I get off track a little bit. So let's say after you leave Billy's, you head back to wanting to go east. But this time you jump on 104, which is uh, another crossroad on 181. And this is also another main road where you'll find a new Publix, a brand new medical center, the three circle church that we mentioned pretty often. And as you head east, you'll run right into Silver Hill. If you blink, you might miss it. So make sure you keep an eye out for Las Catrinas Mexican restaurant and Brody's Cream and Bean. These are two local favorites. Now you're heading towards 59 November. And once you get to Taco Fiesta, you're in Robertsdale. And I swear, I don't just mention the Mexican places either, even though it feels like that at the moment. There's just a lot of them. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm definitely not complaining about it. But then let's keep on track and you go to 59 and you can either head north and you're going to go towards Loxley or you're going to head south towards the beach. Just to show you on the map, let's say you go north and head through Loxley you're going to have to stop at the Farm Fresh Meats. But not only that, you're going to run right into Interstate 10 as you continue to go north. This is where you can head west towards Mobile or east towards Bucky's and then Pensacola. And for everyone wondering, Bucky's is the next exit on Baldwin Beach Expressway. If you want a traffic jam, take this exit on a Saturday in the middle of the summer is it worth it? I don't know. That's your call. But if you do go to Bucky's, chances are you will not be disappointed. Their brisket sandwich is pretty dang good. And it's like a shopping mall in there. So you really can't go wrong. Going back to Robertsdale and heading the other direction. So let's go south now on 104 and 59. This is where we'll pass another Walmart and one of my absolute favorite places, Alligator Alley. This is an alligator farm and a family nature adventure. So if you have kids or you just want to go check out a ton of gators, make sure you check this place out. And if you're in the area, you might as well stop by LA Barbecue because it's right there. I love it in there. Tell them I said hi. If you want smoked meats, that is. 
it's definitely a must go to. And then right after that, you're in Somerdale. Somerdale is also a small town similar to Silver Hill, with just over a thousand people. Again, if you blink, you're going to miss it. Now, let's say you just passed through Somerdale on 59. You can either head west to jump on the Foley Beach Expressway, which will take you past Oa and leave you right in front of Orange Beach's The Wharf. Or you can continue to go south on 59, and this is where you'll run into more traffic and just about everything you can ever imagine. You have South Baldwin Regional Medical Center, which is expanding to keep up with everyone moving here. Anthony's Bridal and Tux Boutique for everyone who needs to rent a tux for Mardi Gras. And yes, we have Mardi Gras balls here. If y'all didn't know, we, Mobile, Alabama, are considered the birthplace of Mardi Gras in the United States, not New Orleans. So let everybody know. Then as you continue to go south, you'll run into two of Jess's favorite places, local and company, and Foley Tanger Outlets. But once you've gone this far, there's no coming back. Just kidding. But honestly, this is where our clients can usually determine if it's too fast paced for them or not, because this is where you'll start to feel the congestion from all the tourists and the locals trying to get to work or to the beach. I think of 59 as a major route in Baldwin County or a main artery, if you will. It can be blocked and it's a pain when it is, but it's also a vital part of town. Without it, we'd be in a lot of trouble. Now, last but not least, let's head to Gulf Shores and Orange Beach. As we continue to head down to the Emerald Green Waters on 59, you'll pass by some notable landmarks. I'll try to keep it brief to keep this train rolling here, but Alabama Gulf Coast Zoo is one of our favorites as a family. And when I want to ditch the kids, I go to Craft Farms Golf Club. It's a beautiful golf course and they offer a military discount, which is always nice. And just below that, you have Gulf Shores International Airport. Right now, you can't fly commercially, but they are just one step closer to building a temporary terminal for commercial flights. So be on the lookout for that sooner than later. And it might seem like I keep talking about everything along 59 here, but it's because there's so much to offer. And I'm telling y'all, I'm barely scratching the surface here. Gulf Shores Parkway is also known for their restaurants like Lulu's and Techie Jack's and their water parks and their putt-putt golf and their go-karts, ice cream shops, you name it. One thing I absolutely have to mention about Gulf Shores is their school system. They broke away from Baldwin County School District and they're planning on building another elementary school and they're adding a jaw-dropping $131 million high school as a response to the city's rapid growth. The reigning 5A state champion Dolphins should be able to use their state-of-the-art facility by 2026. Now, continuing to head south as you leave the high school, you can go down 59 and run right into the beach. Or you can take State Park Road for a more scenic route. Here you'll run into walking trails, the dog park, Lake Shelby's playground, and eventually right to Gulf State Pier on 182. So whether you go straight down 59 or change up the scenery, you'll end up on 182 or Beach Boulevard. And this is where it looks and feels really touristy. You have all the restaurants on the beach like Coastal and Floribama. But what sticks out to me the most is going to be the condos from Gulf Shores to Orange Beach. They're not only beautiful, but they're affordable. And I'm not saying they're cheap, but Comparable to other areas like Miami or Charleston, you'll be pleasantly surprised. Now, are there million and multi-million dollar homes? Yes, of course. It's just nature of the beast. You don't get something for nothing. Ono Island, for example, is a gated community and they offer luxury and privacy with stunning waterfront properties that boast private docks and easy access to the Gulf. The exclusivity and nature just makes it so much more beautiful. It's a prime location for those seeking a high-end lifestyle with the charm of all of lower Alabama. And maybe that's not your jam, but just know we have it. And if you're looking for more adventure, just head back to Gulf Shores and check out Gulf State Park. 
This park spans over 6,000 acres and includes pristine beaches, golf course galore, and U.S. Branion backcountry trail. Whether you're into hiking or biking or fishing or just relaxing by the beach, we have something for everyone. Our Gulf State Park Pier is one of the longest piers on the entire Gulf of Mexico, and we may be a sleepier city than those other big beach cities, but Gulf Shores and Orange Beach host numerous festivals and concerts throughout the year, including the famous Hangout Music Festival, which draws crowds from all over the country. These events are a great way to experience the vibrant community spirit and enjoy some fantastic entertainment. And if you haven't checked out the wharf in Orange Beach, oh, telling you, you're in for a treat. This is another hot spot offering shopping, dining, a marina, and a huge amphitheater that hosts big name concerts like Morgan Wallen and Luke Bryan or Post Malone. All the big names come through here. And it's the perfect place to spend a day with family or friends, just enjoying everything from boat rides to live music. And that's what we love. And we know you'll love it too. So if you're thinking about making the move to Baldwin County or anywhere in lower Alabama, we'd love to be your go-to real estate resource. So make sure you visit us at yourrealestatefam.com or give us a call to get started. Now, check out this video to learn more.